so um, guys, welcome to City Show today. Um, I'm very humble today and I'm pleased to have Mr. Dr. Sise, the presidential candidate of, for um, Citizens Alliance um, for the upcoming um, election in the Gambia. And I am City Sedican and today our guest is Mr. Dr. Sise. Dr. Sise, welcome to Oldenburg and I'm pleased to have you today. Thank you, CD. Thank you for having me. It's a beautiful town. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Really? I know. Because here you can always come at the place. You are always welcome here. So, um, yeah. So, Dr. Sise, today, I am, as I said, we have a lot to talk about. And I know that we didn't talk about like we're going to have an interview, but I know you are always welcome and you're always open for, you know, interviews. So for that being the case, I'm saying, um, yeah, I just want to have um, some small question that I want to ask if that would be a problem. So are we going to speak in English or are we going to continue in the local language? What do you prefer? It's your interview, you decide. <laughs> Good. So guys, so I'm going to try to speak um, both English and Mandinka because I know that some people have been complaining that we have to try and speak in, uh, Mandinka. So I'm going to try to mix it in both. And then, yeah. So, Mr. Sise, you are the uh, presidential candidate for the Citizens Alliance, and December is just in the corner. How prepared are you for the uh, upcoming election? Highly prepared. Very well prepared. Um, we have our strategy uh, ready for a couple of months ago last year. We are implementing that strategy. Because you have to understand, with government elections, uh, the way the electoral cycle is, it's not only the presidential elections that we have to focus on. We also have the local government elections, which are equally important, especially the national assembly elections. So our strategy focuses on three phases. The pre-election period, the election period, and the post-election period. And that strategy is on course. Um, it has to do more with total, what we call total outreach. Getting out to the most basic level at the community level, the grassroots level, the village to village. And we've been doing that very successfully. Uh, so we are happy to do What is the impact for that um, project you're doing? Because I've been seeing that photos that you have been traveling to different places, different places, meeting young people, meeting elder people, and seeing that maybe uh, people don't know, and maybe people will be interested to know why Mr. Zizetek uh, make this step to uh, meet young people in the community, try to at least um, yeah, use his time to meet young people. Yeah, I think it's, it's two things. Uh, one is to do some sensitization work when it comes to the, uh, the registration of voters. That this election is a very important election for Gambia. For sure. It will decide which way Gambia, yeah. whether we are going for progress and development yeah. Yeah. or whether we have going for stagnation and retrogress. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's important that we go around the country and enlighten the people and make them understand the importance of elections, but also why they should register to get their voters cards. Now, but also what is needed for them to get the voters card. So it's about sensitization. Because, like I always tell them, mm -hmm. that we complain. Yeah. We don't have electricity, we don't have water, we don't have good health care, we don't have good schools, we don't have good roads, we don't have security. Mm -hmm. These things don't fall from the sky. Yeah, that's true. The only thing that can give you these things is your voter's card, card. is your vote. Yeah. By registering to vote, mm -hmm. elections, you listen to all the candidates it's... and you choose the right candidate and vote that person into office, then all else will follow. That's what Kwame Nkrumah said. said yeah. He said, seek ye for the political kingdom and all else will follow. So therefore, Gambians must first get their voters card, go and vote for the right candidate, then they'll get water, electricity, good roads, healthcare, education, and security. So you just don't want to get uh, people's vote like that. You just want to implement this information. You, you just want to sensitize people to know exactly how important and how valuable their voters card is, and that they have to make sure they make a good decision with it. Mm -hmm. Ni pataka carte It's a very important exercise. Yeah, for sure. You don't just vote because of any other reason. Yeah. You vote because you want development. 
So therefore, your vote must be well informed. You yeah. must be well informed before you vote. Yeah. It's a life changing. You have to know exercise. exactly. You have to know exactly the fact. So we have to tell the people. We, need, we cannot allow a situation where people will vote because we are from the same tribe. Oh, they because they are not vote. Don't let killing. Yeah. See for Tomfanso. Tomfanso. Don't let us start killing. That has been the problem in Africa. That is why Africa is still going back. That's that's so mainly We Gambia. need to tell the people that mm. why do you why are you going to vote? Who should you vote for? for. How should you vote? Well, we need to educate them to understand Stand the up. importance of their vote. That in '65, yeah, we voted to get independence from Great Britain. Yeah, in 2016, we voted for the rule of law and democracy to flourish in Gambia. Yeah, now we are going to vote for development. Because independence and democracy are meaningless if there is no development. Amen. Yeah, that's true. So therefore, now we are going to vote for them. Not only that, mm. now we are going to vote for the next generation. So the leader we are going to vote in now is the leader who should start building Gambia for the next generation. That is the leader we are going to vote. So now, if, essentially, if I vote in December, yeah. I'm not voting for myself, Self? I'm voting for my Somebody children else. that are even not yet born. Yeah, for the Because generation. I'm voting for the candidate who's going to build a country for them, so they can live in dignity in the Gambia. In that sport, I'm going to ask you, as a presidential candidate, if Mr. Sisse, um, was in, I mean, it's not, uh, oh, was, um, it's not elected as a president in 2022, uh, I would say, will you like to work with the next um, government? To make sure that, you, uh, like you said right now, to implement those um, projects in the Gambia together with the gov new government? When I entered politics, the only reason why I entered because I want to be part of the generation of Gambians that can transform and build the modern Gambia. Change, yeah. You don't have to lead to change. Yeah. So if 2021 comes, yeah. I know I will get elected. Yeah. But in case that did not happen, yeah. And somebody else is elected mm -hmm. as a new government, mm -hmm. and that government wants me to work for that government, Go for the for Gambian it. people. Yeah, their vision aligns with my vision. Vision, yeah. Their thinking aligns with my thinking. Mm -hmm. Their integrity and ethics aligns with mine. Mm -hmm. And I know they will fight corruption. Yeah, that they invest in the Gambian people, mm -hmm. especially young people, for them to get jobs. Yeah, I will work for that government if that is the case. But not just to get a job, work for it because I want to post. No, oh, I'm you, not looking for you don't want. You don't want to. Involved in any corrupt, corrupt government, no. you just want to go there. If you find out that the government is serious, if their vision is aligned with my vision, then I work on that government. If I did not win the election, so meaning Mr. Sisa is that is, open that is to deliver to yeah. the Gambian people. people, but not just because I want the position, we take a position, you know. But if there's a government that is in power that really is serious to work, it's something we can consider. So you respect your integrity then. No, of course. I mean, we do not join politics for to get a job, just to get a ministerial position. If we want a ministerial for a job, we will not join politics. Yeah, that's right. It's a uh, shortcut to, to get a job or in a ministerial position. Not everybody thinks like we, that. We join politics to make, to transform society. Mm -hmm. We join politics to serve, to be a servant yeah. to the people. So if we don't win, which is highly unlikely, and then uh, new government is in power who wants us to help out, mm -hmm. to help in any form. Mm -hmm. Maybe perhaps I might not take a ministerial position. Mm -hmm. I can plan advice here if they want to engage me in any way to help fulfill a vision to transform Gambia. We are ready to help. But nonetheless, we are still going to be in CA as a party. And what for the next election? We will not abandon the city right? just because we are open. You know, we will work within that framework to help them deliver. For them to deliver to the Gambian people, we can help them do that. Yeah. Not as a minister. I don't want the minister of the government. Yeah, right. No, I have, because I'm heading a political party. I cannot abandon my political party and go and be a minister for another government. Right. I can still be party leader. Yeah. Yet the next government in power, mm -hmm. when they need my advice, when they need me to support them in any way, for them to deliver their vision, which is right, we will work with them. But not working for a government just because we are the minister of you're not going to do that. My other question is going to be like, what do you have to say about the new gov I mean, the government right now? If the government of Adam Abaro is still going to lead the Gambia after, um, I mean, 2022, another five years again, what will you? What, what will be your step? Oh, as, God, as, as God, a, God forbid. Don't cause us. 
Hey, I don't know because five years of Adam Abaro's government. It's gonna be. It's gonna be catastrophic. Why do you think it's gonna be catastrophic? Because we've seen what is done in five years. It cut amount of destruction built up that You think it's gonna Env environmentally, in demographic, in any way? What has Gambia achieved since Adam Abaro came? Not even the most basic promises they made. TRC, I could say. No, TRC is still ongoing. It's not over yet. Yeah. TRC will be successful only if the recommendations are fully implemented. Mm -hmm. And there's reconciliation and healing. And the victims get justice. It is only when we say they're successful. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, that is too early. Yeah. The Janet Commission did not implement the record findings, so it has failed. This constitution, which is the most important, the pillar of the recovery of the, of the, of the transition, is failed. There's no new constitution. There is no, no new electoral law, and so does something die for what else have elect to, to reform the electoral laws. Security sector reform is dead. We're not talking about it anymore. Yeah. So, all our land is being sold. Even the reserve land that is supposed to be used next generation, yes, they are selling all the land. So, what has Gambia achieved in the past five years? What has Adam Boro done that is positive? Nothing. I mean, the security, look at the Public safety is at its lowest. People are not safe anymore. You hear everyday crime has gone off. This is what I want to talk about because so, the security so in the Gambia is... Exactly. So why should we have a government that can even fulfill the most basic purpose? Can it deliver anything to the government people? Another five years. That's going to be catastrophic for the government people. We don't prove it. I mean, the security of the government right now is hindered. Totally catastrophic. Every four days, there will, there will be someone they will, they will be complained that people, uh, someone is dead, or I mean, I mean tortured, or been someone's place, or someone stole something from someone else, or somebody, um, I mean, I don't know, more than someone else in the Gambia. And now, right now, Gambians are scared. As you can see, um, day before yesterday, I saw a video of 11 years old who was, I mean, um, raped by another man, which is totally unbelievable in the Gambia. You as a politician, and you are one of the politicians people believe they could lead the country. If Mr. Sisi is today, you are the president. What are the three things that you think you can do to change those things, I mean, the strategies, what is happening in the country right now? You mean when it comes to public security, safety? when it comes to public safety? I so? mean, obviously, you have to understand the deep, the root causes of any situation. I saw this coming. That is why when I um, told the borough government two years ago, the economy cannot provide lockdown security. I was arrested because we saw. That you were arrested because you said that. Because I said that. I was in. I was in. Uh, in a cell for. I think there's democracy in the Gambia. Yeah, no, but I. I, I was arrested by the police in 2018, and I was put in, in a cell at Bambu police station for, for almost a night for a night because I said that Ekomi cannot ensure long term security. In the Gambia that they should start to invest in our security Sorry. and, and, and trust our security. And that's fact. Security. But nonetheless, whenever there is a problem, you have to answer three things. Mm -hmm. What, why, how. Any government should do that, do that. based on data. Yeah. So what is happening? What is happening is there's an increase in Gambia now. Don't happen before. Yeah. So there's a problem. Yeah. That crime has increased and diversified. Yeah. So next question to answer is why is it happening? Yeah, that's 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 why right. has crime rates increased? Why are we seeing different types of crimes that did not exist before? Once you establish that, the next question is how do you solve the problem? So we've established that crime rates have gone up. Yeah. Why is it happening? Many factors are happening. Yeah. Rural urban migration has increased. Yeah. Sixty percent of our population live in urban Ghana, greater Bandu area. Yeah. At the same time, international migration has decreased. Decreased, yeah. But then again, the cost of living has increased. Yeah. The sectors that absorb young people into uh, are, are dead. Yeah. Tourism is dead. Tourism, yeah. Totally dead. Exactly. So, and then you look at drugs and drugs and alcohol. It's getting easy, higher. Cheap and easily accessible. Yeah. So, young people, the Gambia is a young population. 17 years is the median age. 65% are below 35, 60 are below 35. So you have all these young people, no jobs, frustrated, feeling deprived, living in inequality. Yeah. Now, you take all these boys in Germany, Italy, Switzerland, and deport them back, back to them onto them. Obviously. That's the so, so, so these are the root we need to do. So what do we do now? Two things. Yeah. One has to do with the social aspect. The other is the operational aspect. The social aspect, we engage young people in a positive way. We build more skills training centers. 
we engage them, get them jobs, so that they can earn a living. That is one. Two, mm -hmm. for the, still the social, mm -hmm. we do need to do a proper prison reform. Mm -hmm. Our prison system is not rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. So you keep a young man who was caught smoking a joint, right. six months, one year in prison. You release him back into society with no reintegration plan, it goes back to crime. Yeah. But also, the mental health sector needs to be reformed. That that's now, cool. the 11-year-old child who was raped, yeah. the boy who caught, killed his father, yeah. this has to be mental health issues perhaps. So, but in Gambia today, people can be in our homes. They have mental health problem, and people don't know. Home. Yeah, that's fact. If you on, if only, the only time we think you have mental health is when you put on drugs. In your mother, yeah. But we need to also look at that. So, these are the social. We need to look at the prison reforms. We need to uh, we need to look at our mental health system. But also engage young people and make sure they get skills and jobs. Wow. So they can be able to be productive citizens. Okay. And also reduce the corruption in the Gambia and reduce inequality in the Gambia. Whenever there's a society where there's inequality, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting, getting poor. poor. And there's a huge gap between the two. Crime happens. Operational. Mm -hmm. The police and the law enforcement. Mm -hmm. They must be well equipped, well trained, and prepare them to deal with 21st century crimes. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a police force that thinks and is equipped mm -hmm. like in the 1980s mm -hmm. to deal with 21st century complex crimes. Yeah. It's not possible. It's not possible. That's you need to train them to think 21st century. You equip them with body cameras, communication gadgets, yeah. good vehicles, so they can do it. They can things. be secured and then secure is right. The police does two things to prevent and to solve crime. Simple, yeah. The only way you do it is to make sure that you equip them. And we don't have much time because I know that right now you don't have more time. But uh, I'm going to give you two questions. One is about um, how corrupted do you think Gambia is right now? Well, um, the corruption levels have gone up, obviously. And also it's been, more, it's been democratized. There's a lot of corruption in Gambia today. Um, not only in terms of uh, pilfering of yeah. public funds, yeah. but also the way contracts are given. We've seen contracts that are taking place. Mm -hmm. We've heard stories, obviously, yeah. about the, especially in the fisheries sector, sector yeah. where these big Chinese fishing trawlers encroach yeah. within our nine nautical miles, mm -hmm. and when they are caught by the navy, mm -hmm. a minister, particular minister, permanent secretary, will say, "Leave them." We've had audios where Papa and permanent secretary accept to receive hundred thousand dollars from the Chinese. Just because. Exactly. We've seen a situation where the first lady's wife, um, a company, deposited. $35,000 into that, $3 million, is, uh, $35 million is into that account. That same company now has won an award with Nawek. So we've seen how public officials at top government positions are, corrupt. are living beyond their means. Driving cars we know they cannot afford. afford. Building homes we know they cannot afford. And people who are close to, we've seen people close to the president, we see it, who have no job, no portfolio whatsoever and they, they, they are get... building big houses in Gambia wow. so where are they getting the money from we've also seen how the government since they came to power they made three promises one they are going to declare their assets before they take over office they fail to do that two they are going to create an anti-corruption commission they fail to do that so the institutions that are supposed to fight corruption are there are not there yeah no anti-corruption commission nothing they fail to declare their assets and we, we've seen how they will, they are living their way of living. So corruption has increased, even though it's difficult to have accept there as a commission of inquiry, to know the extent of it. Mm -hmm. And know the, you know, with authority we can speak, just like with the agenda. We cannot, but anecdotally, we've seen how corruption is everywhere in the Gambia. You're right. Gambia is really corrupted, and I can attach to that. My last question is, before time, we already don't have time anymore. My last question is, we have seen that now, People who are living outside Gambia, the migrants, are, their lives are always in danger. Like yesterday, we have two uh, incidents in front guys. A Gambian who was, I mean, murdered. And we haven't heard anything from the Gambian government. We haven't heard anything from anyone else. And we say the Gambians are mainly dying in Italy. Some of them are going through mental problems. Some of them are dying. Nobody knows why. And what do you have to say about that? Do you think you. Do you heard about such issues? I mean, about of course, I'm, I am very saddened to know that our boys, especially in Italy, are facing uh, very hard times. If you go to the ban off in Italy, you see many young Gambians wasting 
alcohol drugs so much mental problems mental problems nobody is helping them nobody nobody is engaging them um, the gambia government's primary responsibility is to protect its citizens and fight for their welfare but they have failed the gambians in them but if gambian government cannot even provide security and safety and in the welfare country. of the gambian in gambia how can they do living outside so we mean gambia so we need to today the gambian government have a database of each and every gambian living outside Sorry. where they are who they are what they are up to and where they can get help mm-hmm. and so on and so forth yeah but that's not happening and it's unfortunate uh, until and unless we have a government that is serious that cares about the welfare of gambians especially young gambians living abroad our wish on the final note is to ensure every gambian lives in that inside gambia we don't want anybody to leave to be forced and free. we want to make sure we build a gambia that everybody where everybody start. can get a job you can have a good living a decent life you can have access to good health care access to good education access to electricity access to clean water access to good roads and you can become what you want to be you can be a pilot an engineer a lawyer a farmer a carpenter a welder but yet what whatever you are doing it really benefits you you live good whenever you come to europe oldenburg you just come for holidays you go back yeah. you want to come and do like you do right now right that is all you enjoy the place ah, well, it's, it's all right. <laughs> thank you so much mr cc i know that we don't have time and they have a timing an appointment right now so they're like in haste so therefore ladies and gentlemen thank you so very much for your time we have to leave mr cc to flee he's here with us today in oldenburg and he's enjoying you can see right now man i came out of the world so so you know i have to leave him to um go for his another um appointment so but i'm i hope so that you're gonna come back again to oldenburg so we can have more time you know as next a, time as right? a president then. yeah so as an ex-president as, as a president, yeah yes. and you pick so me i will be like yeah i'm gonna pick you come on <laughs> so i'm gonna say like you know so guys unfortunately i know it's interested mr cc is going and they have an appointment and someone is looking at me on in the eye you know <laughs> so let me see this time so um therefore i would say like mr cc people are saying thank you so very much for your time and then yeah everyone hello <laughs> 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 <laughs>